Hello folks, Everchanger here for episode 16 of Pokemon Liquid Crystal. Last time we defeated Whitney at the gym in Goldenrod City and got the plane badge. And today we are going to be continuing on north to check out the wiggly tree that people are talking about. Alright, I think I'm going to tank right through the grass here and neglect to use a repel because I think we need to get another member on our team. So hopefully I might be able to... I'm not going to the gym, I just left. Hopefully I'll be able to find something in the grass that I can use before too long to cover our electric weakness that is cropping up in the party. Vulpix is coming out right here. I think this might be the first Vulpix we've seen. I'm not sure. Alright, let's just lay on a quick attack right here. Alright, good damage. And it just responds with a quick attack, so I guess this will just be a battle of speed. Alright, and I think that was her only Pokemon, so we already beat this person, which is nice. Oh, I couldn't win. Awesome. I'm just gonna... Oh, there's a house here. I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm just gonna tank through the trainers here. I want the experience. I'm gonna show my girlfriend I'm hot stuff. <laughs> oh, gosh. Camper Elliot wants to battle. Sandshrew. Maybe I should get a Sandshrew. I've never actually used Sandshrew or Sandslash, like at all, I don't think, so that might be interesting. Just depends on whether or not we encounter one. Now, last episode, uh, I failed to get the Pokemon from the uh, cop in the, in the station just south of here, but I think if this progresses just like Pokemon Crystal, we're going to be heading back to Goldenrod City anyway before dealing with the Wiggly Tree. So I think once I go back there, I'll make some room in my party and maybe free up some Pokeball space. Free up some Pokeball space? Don't know what that's supposed to mean. Buy some Pokeballs. I can definitely words. I'm going to buy some Pokeballs and free up some space. And then we can catch the Sudowoodo. And then take that bird Pokemon over to the guy by Violet City. And it'll be a good time. Alright, got Meryl coming out next, which is interesting. Not sure if we've seen a Meryl before either. We've probably seen all of these before and I'm just having a gigantic lapse in my memory, but oh well. Uh, and Rollout comes out. Luckily I don't think it'll survive another turn to get off another one of those. Let's just hit it with Gust and see what we can do. Oh no, it actually did manage to survive. Surprising. Super effective! There's this webcomic out on the internet called Super Effective, which I always love reading, except a new page only comes out like once every five months. So that kind of puts a damper on things a little bit, doesn't it? I wish you would have lost for me. So you want to lie to your girlfriend. Very, very interesting. Let's see if she's any better. My boyfriend's weak, so I can't rely on him. <laughs> oh gosh, isn't that the truth? Alright. Picnicker Brook wants to battle. Sends out Pikachu! Oh boy, electric type. I'm liking the uh, re-spriting on Pikachu here. It's pretty interesting. I'm liking it so far. I always like seeing Pokemon from new angles because it sort of helps you gain a better appreciation for them than before. Because there are some Pokemon sprites in certain games that really don't do them justice at all, so I think it's good when they decide to change things up quite a bit. Alright, Brook was defeated. Oh my, you're so strong! Indeed I am. Alright, oh. <laughs> Didn't really even mean to walk right into him that quick. I've been getting Pokemon data off my radio, I think I'm good. But the radio doesn't work! <laughs> oh man. I know this game has been in a live beta for quite a while, but I don't think it's actually seen an update in several months. So I'm not sure when any of this stuff is going to get updated, but if it gets updated during the Let's Play in any meaningful way, I'll try and see if I can upgrade to, the, to a new version with new features in it, although I doubt that'll happen. Pidgeotto is trying to learn Wing Attack, oh thank god. In uh, Pokemon X and Y, Pidgeotto didn't even learn Wing Attack until it had evolved into Pidgeot in my... Uh, personal playthrough of Pokemon X. So it's a good thing we're getting wing attack good and early right here, because Gust was getting a little bit lame. Alright, Zubat's coming out. Let's test out wing attack on it, see what it can do. Alright, wing attack, go! 
So while we're just going through the- wow. It's even better than I thought. While we're just going through this route here, I think I should talk a little bit about the state of the channel, I suppose. Um, first off, the new Elgato came out, which is awesome. And I don't plan on purchasing the new hardware at this time, but they updated the software to have multi-channel audio, which basically what that means is it will record the game footage and audio for the game onto one track, and then it will record the voiceover audio onto a second track, which means I can edit them independently, which is why in certain episodes of uh, Mario Kart 8, before this feature was implemented, the voice was slightly drowned out by the game audio, because they would just interlace them into the same track, so you couldn't edit them independently, so... If an episode was recorded a little bit incorrectly, one, you couldn't tell until after you were finished recording, and two, there's really nothing you could do about it once you did notice, which is unfortunate. I think we got a guy right here. I'm practicing my fire breathing! Awesome. So yeah, I've upgraded to the new software, so hopefully the audio quality on the Mario Kart videos will slightly improve. But unfortunately, Rio the Lion is going to be leaving town for college on, I believe, the 24th, which also happens to be his birthday, so if anyone wants to go wish Rio the Lion a happy birthday on his day of departure, I'm burned, are you kidding me? But yeah, if anyone wants to go do that, please feel free to do so. So, unfortunately, we might not be having very many more Mario Kart videos with Rio the Lion for a while, but it's possible that I could find other people to do the series with, so it's not like it could stop altogether. It'll just be a bit shaken up, get a change of pace. And also, in regards to the Minecraft series, it has been announced that 1.8 looks to be possibly coming out within either this week or next week which means we will finally, finally, finally be able to get all the amazing new features they've added, and we might also be able to go fight the Ender Dragon, because we've been wanting to reap the rewards of the better, more efficient experience system with what we can get at the Dragon Fight. So that should be interesting, and we should also have the slime blocks, and the banners, and all sorts of crazy awesome things. And this Voltover is only level 12, what is up with that? Segway! <laughs> Oh wow, it tanked it. Awesome. But yeah, I think that's about the state of the series in general. I suppose in terms of the upload schedule, I've been thinking about what I'm going to do once my own college starts on September 2nd. And I think, and this is tentative, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pre-record content on the weekends and then release it probably on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. So that's probably what'll happen. I think I'll just do that with this series. Now this is all tentative, by the way, but the way it's working out in my head right now is I think I'll pre-record three episodes of Pokemon Luka Crystal over the weekend, starting in September, and then upload each one of those Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if we happen to record a Minecraft video or something like that, maybe I'll wedge it in the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday area. But yeah, I suppose we'll just have to wait and see how it goes, because I'm starting a completely new education with a completely new level of expectance when it comes to work. So, it's basically all up in the air, but I'm going to do my absolute best to keep content steady on the channel for those of you who are avid watchers. So just keep that in mind. It's going gonna, it's gonna to slow down a little bit, but I'm going to try and make sure it doesn't stop altogether, because whenever I go on a sort of unplanned hiatus. I always just get really nervous and just uncomfortable with it. I don't know, I just really don't feel comfortable with saying, alright, I'm gonna put out all this content and then it just not happening. So I'm gonna do my absolute best to keep on top of it this time, so it should be interesting to see how that will unfold in the coming months. Juggler Irwin sent out Voltorb. I believe this is the fourth one. Good thing I found something good and informative to talk about while I was fighting this guy because it's just water gunning down all these Voltorb. <laughs> but I think this one last attack should do it in, which is awesome. We could go north into the National Park right now, but I think I want to go check out what that house is about because there was no house there in the original Pokemon Crystal, so I want to be sure to see what that's all about. Are you going to fight us? No. Your Pokemon look pretty tough. You can go anywhere safely. So I guess the game doesn't consider it to be night anymore. 
This looks like a very, very large patch of grass, so I think I'm going to throw up a rappel for this one, basically because if we try and get all the way through it and then all the way back, we could be here all day. Alright, let's just throw up a rappel there. Is there an item right here, or am I just seeing things? There is! TM04. It contains rollout. Awesome. Of course, they had to incorporate the... You gonna fight me? Yes. Of course they had to incorporate the experience system from Black and White and the physical special split from Diamond and Pearl, but no TM buff from Black and White, which is unfortunate. Bugcatcher Arn. This is a really niche detail, but I'm almost certain his name was Arnie? A-R-N-I-E in the original, so I think I'm gonna file that under the typo category for now, and I am poisoned, which is not very good. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to switch out to, oh yeah, Pidgeot has fainted. Well, Ghastly can always do with the experience. Do it, Ghastly! Alright, I was going to be, I was about to flip out if he managed to nail a supersonic on me. Alright, Nightshade, let's see what that can do. Such a cool animation. Ah, doing pretty good, and there's a supersonic right there. Oh boy. Alright, we just need to pull off one more attack, I think, and we'll be good. Come on. Yes, awesome. Alright, Nightshade goes through. Will it be enough? Yes. Alright, Venonat is down. Get our experience. And Arnie was defeated. Huh? I shouldn't have lost that. And we get monies for winning. Alright, let's just dip right in the bag real quick and heal up that poisoning. Uh, where's my, my, uh, what's it called? Antidote. There it is, all the way up at the top. Alright. Heal that up real quick. And I think that'll be good. Got a cut tree right there, so I suppose we could bypass the National Park altogether, but I don't really want to because it has some of my favorite music in the whole series. Alright, is there anyone else down here? Yes, there is. Do you fight us? I don't know. Yes, you do. What kind of balls do you use? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Alrighty. Bird... Ah, another typo. Man, these are just coming in quick succession. Bird Keeper Brian wants to battle. Sends out Pidgey. Get on my level, bro. I have a Pidgeotto. I mean, yeah, it's fainted, but... Don't let that reflect on its battling capabilities. You got me, sir? You got me? No? Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm having a lot of fun commentating these. I don't know why, it's just... I thought I would really enjoy the, the co-op commentaries with Rio the Lion a lot more, but I find these ones, like, equally as fun. I didn't think I'd find this nearly as fun as I do. So that's really, really good. Always make sure when you're doing something, make sure you to have fun with it. You make sure you to have fun with it. I think that's what I just said. Uh, I can't even words. I really can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, Pidgeotto coming out. He is now officially on my level. And pulling out quick attacks, which is not good. Alright, let's see if we can get a couple more bites off of here. Uh-oh, we're getting a bit low in the HP here. Can we please not have a potion? Yes, awesome. Alright, Pidgeotto is down. One interesting thing about this route, a little bit of a diversion here, but this route actually for some odd reason in heart gold and soul silver it goes north and then east north west north instead of here where it just goes north west north that little main path over there so i found that pretty interesting and there's a lot more grass here too and this ledge which is new all right i have no clue what's in this house so let's check it out all right what do you got for me good sir Oh, hi there. This is the stat corner of the EV Training Center. Do you know about individual values? The higher they are, the stronger your Pokémon can become. Oh, hey, did you know? Your Pokémon could be powerful. Want to find out? Go on, give it a try. Show me one of your Pokémon. I can tell if it has strong IVs or not. So, want to give it a go? It would appear that this is the what came to be known in Pokémon Emerald and later as the Judge who will evaluate your Pokémon's IVs, or individual values, which are basically random numbers between 0 and 31 assigned to, assigned to each of your Pokémon's stats, and when your Pokémon is at level 100, each IV equates to an extra stat point. 
IVs range from 0 to 31 and are randomly generated for every Pokémon you obtain. The higher the value, the stronger that individual stat will be. Their first IV we will look at is the HP, 4, which is pretty low, yes it is. Next, the attack IV, 14 is pretty average. Okay, and now the defense IV, 21, which is pretty decent. Great, now for the speed IV, 11 is pretty average. Alright, time for the special attack IV, 18 is pretty average. And finally, the special defense IV, 4, which is pretty low. As you can see, your Pokémon has a wide range of IVs, strong, some stronger than others. You should consider training your EVs to boost this Pokémon in areas it excels the most. I can look at another Pokémon if you'd like. No. He goes into a lot more depth than the Judge in the main series games, which is certainly interesting. He actually gives you exact values, because the Judge in the regular games will only give you slight vague references. This is interesting. I'm just going to finish my thought. The judge in the official games will only give you like vague phrases, which you then have to extrapolate, and it won't give you like an exact number unless it's 31, in which case he will tell you it's perfect. But anyway, it seems we have a new plot point here. What do you mean you're closing the contest down? Because I'm the new park warden and I said I'm closing the contest down. But you can't do that. The contests have been going for years without problems. It's the other Warden's fault for moving to the Orange Islands. You should have known this would happen. Now, if you'll please excuse me, I don't have time for this nonsense. What are you staring at? Ha <laughs> ha, this is very interesting. He did mention the Orange Islands, which you can't... Orange Islands. I seriously, like, the words. The words don't even come to me. He mentioned the Orange Islands which, according to the blurb on the official website for this hack, actually do appear in this game, but they are not yet completed. I am having a little bit of an internal conflict about whether or not I should actually do the Orange Islands at all, but that's way, way in the future, so I think we'll just leave that to how it is at the moment, and we'll revisit the issue at a later point. I wonder when the contests will start up again. So do I. This is interesting. And Repel's effect wore off, of course. We used to hold contests regularly here in the park until the warden moved out. The new warden stopped the contest. Very, very interesting. The bug catching contest has been permanently removed from National Park due to authorization issues. We're sorry for any trouble caused. Warden. Now, in the original games and in the remakes, there was a contest here, I believe, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday? Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And basically what you do is you were given 20 minutes and 20 park balls and you could just go out into the National Park and you could catch basically any bug Pokemon you want, but you could only keep one to be judged. And high-ranking Pokemon would earn you higher prizes. I'm wondering if that was actually like a plot reason why it was removed or if it was a difficult thing to program into Pokemon Fire Red because such a mechanic did not exist in the original game at all, so it's possible there were just some programming issues and they had to write it out. But anyway... I'm playing with stickers I printed from my Pokedex. That is a reference to the Game Boy printer, which is not compatible with this version of the game. I get the other guy's Pokedex sticker if I win. Very cool, very cool. Nothing in the trash, obviously. I believe there's a teacher over here that'll give us Quick Claw. Pay attention, please. Oops, I have to quit thinking like a teacher all the time. You must be a Pokemon trainer. Since you're working so hard, I want you to have this. And yes, we do indeed get the Quick Claw. I know absolutely way too much about this game. Sometimes your Pokemon will strike first during battle if it is holding it, which is very, very good for slower Pokemon and get the edge. I'm really liking the music in here, as usual. I think I'm going to go around and fight a lot of the trainers here just because I want to get the experience. So I'm going to switch Ghastly around into the front. And then I'm going to revive up some of my Pokemon, because I really don't feel like running off to the Pokemon Center now that we've made it all the way up here. So let's do our first regular revive of the series, I believe, because we used a Max Revive at one point. I don't remember exactly when it was. Alright, getting the heals up there, and let's get some Super Potions out. I figure I stocked up on all this equipment right before taking on Whitney, so I figure I might as well use it. Alright, just get one more Super Potion on Croconaw. And I think that's more than enough to do some fighting around here, so let's get right on into it. My Pokémon are simply darling. Let me tell you how proud my darlings make me. Alright, let's get this started. 
Pokefan Beverly wants to battle. Sends out Snubble. And of course, it just so happens that I cannot damage this Pokemon with Ghastly, which means I immediately have to switch out into another Pokemon. Uh, not run. Derp. Uh, let's bring out Croconaw since it's at the lower level. Some point soon I'll probably be grinding up Ghastly a little bit because it is actually getting quite a bit low, which is unfortunate. But hopefully once it evolves into Haunter and then Gengar, I will definitely start being able to pull its own weight. Not to say it didn't in the gym battle last episode, but you know what I mean, level-wise. Alright, we got bites and water guns being thrown all over the place. And the rain animation interrupting us every five seconds. Alrighty. And Water Gun has taken down Snubble, which is awesome. And Ghastly gets level 19, which is also awesome. Alright, and Bev Beverly was defeated. I can beat you in pride, but I don't know, I'm pretty proud. I just beat your Snubble. Alright, let's see what else is around here. I always remember there being a lot more trainers in this place than there actually are. Look, check out my bag. I printed out my favorites from my Pokedex and stuck them on my bag. I never actually used the Game Boy printer. I never owned one, which is unfortunate. And in the original game, this lower bit of grass was the regular height, but the upper bit of grass was super high. So when you looked at the park from way, way far out in like a guide or something, it actually looked like a Pokeball and it had the color contrast too. Hello, why are you staring at me? Oh, a battle? Yes, it, it, it's definitely a battle that I want. It's not like I'm 10 or anything. Last Chris would like to battle. Chris cries? I don't know. And she sends out Oddish. Alright, let's see if we can nightshade this thing into oblivion. A little bit dark for Pokemon, but okay, I guess it is dark out. It's raining, and it actually is IRL dark out right now. I hope it doesn't start raining on me because it creates a background noise that's quite frustrating to deal with. Alright, rain continues to fall. Just stay in the game, please. Nightshade it one more time. And not quite. Unfortunate, but we'll make it work. We're losing evasiveness real fast. I always found that weird when Pokemon like spam evasiveness when it's quite obvious that they could be just dealing damage to me because as soon as they get up a couple layers of evasiveness, they're dead. So, I don't know. I think they just waste their time when they do that. Alright, let's just unleash more Nightshade since they decided to pull the potion gag on us once again. Alright, Nightshade. Just spamming Nightshade here. And I think it's almost down, and of course you have to get in the old Stun Spore, which is always lovely. Alright, can we bring you down this turn? I hope so. Uh, let's go Lick this time. Sweet Scent once more. Why don't you actually attack me? You're gonna faint this turn anyway. Or not, of course, as soon as I say that. ay 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 Alright, can Lick connect this time? Sounded a little bit more disturbing than it was actually supposed to be. And yes! Oh, come on! <laughs> oh my gosh, did it really not do anything at all just there? Oh yeah, yeah. I knew Lick was weak, but I didn't know it was that weak. Oh yeah, yeah. I know it's getting replaced last next time uh, Ghastly decides to learn a move, that's for sure. Alright, there's a Cubone coming out, which is a ground type, so let's bring out the water. It's funny, uh, Real the Lion, in a private message, actually suggested to me that I use Cubone and later Marowak as one of my team members in this Let's Play, which would have been fine. I would have personally really enjoyed using a Marowak. I've never used one before. The problem is, I went and looked up where you can find it, and it's like super, super late in the game, way, way after it would be relevant. So, unfortunately, that is out of the question, which really disappointed me. I thought Marowak was actually a really good suggestion. It's just... Oh well, sometimes things just don't work out that way. Alright. Hmm. Now give me your money. Alright, let's sneak back out of the grass here. Are there any other trainers up here? Alright, there's that one. Fight this guy. Look at me! The world of Pokémon is deep. 
There are still lots of things we don't know. But I know more than you do. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Well, good sir, Mr. Jake. I certainly know how to beat you because I'm gonna do it right here and right now. Alrighty. And once again, it is raining. Alright, can we get off a nightshade on this Oddish right here, or are we gonna get stuck with paralysis for a turn? Paralysis is just the worst. It feels just so lame. Like, when that happens, it's like, come on, you're the... You're a really weak, random NPC trainer. I'm gonna beat you anyway, you're just delaying the inevitable. If I get paralyzed again this turn, I think I'm just gonna switch out to Pidgeotto. Alright, Nightshade connects, which is good. I really can't words. I think that's about the fourth time I've said it this episode, but I really just can't. <laughs> um, since that did less than half, I don't want to waste two more turns and potentially more... Uh, banking on Paralysis not having an effect, so I'm actually going to switch. Playing the weaknesses in my favor, of course. And, of course, Evasiveness fell. Not that it matters, because I'm going to nail it with a Wing Attack this turn, and it's definitely going to be going down. I'll be honest, I have no clue how long this episode is going, up, is going on for, because I don't actually have a clock nearby, so I don't remember when I started. And I don't know how long it's been, and Beedrill, that's interesting. So this might wind up being a super long one, I have no idea. <laughs> These video files actually aren't that big because the graphics are so basic it doesn't have to uh, save super complex graphics. Especially since like a good fifth of the video screen is black because the uh, aspect ratio of the game is different. Alright, wah wah what? But yeah, I think as soon as I finish off exploring this area, we're going to end it. So that should be fun. I think that's all of the trainers here. There might be one up top, I think. There's a guy with a Raichu, I always remember, but it doesn't seem that he's here. This is mail I got from my daughter. It cheers me up. Trainer tips. Print out mail by opening it when pressing start. Yeah, I can't really do any of these printing references, but I like that they kept them in because it still makes you... It's still a good callback to the originals, which is always fun. You can also print out stuff like mail in your PC boxes. They really like touting that feature right around this area. Alright, what do we got here? Parlize Heal. So glad they gave it the full proper spelling. Oh, there's an area bag here. Totally lost my train of thought, but hey, there's an area. Choose your Pokeball wisely. Hmm. We are going to have to come back here when we get Surf, because that might be a new Pokemon. I don't know. That caught me off guard. I don't even remember what I was talking about beforehand. This little gap in the fence right here, I never ever noticed it my first time playing through this game, which is funny because I couldn't figure out how to move the Wiggly Tree Pokemon. So I was stuck here forever, and I just never noticed that gap was there. I guess it was just a lot harder to notice on the Game Boy Color screen. Anything down here we can grab? Um, is there anything invisible or anything? There is! We got a full heal. Not the best item in the world, but it's pretty good. Good thing we got one for free, that's for sure. And I believe right down here we have TM28 Dig. Yes, indeed we do, which is awesome. And we get TM28 in the TM case. I believe all field TMs such as that are actually sold at the Goldenrod department store, so we don't have to worry about using up a TM like Headbutt or, uh, or Dig. Sorry, excuse me. But yeah, I think they just sell those so you don't have to worry about wasting it because they always give you an extra. Alright, got anything else to say? Some Pokemon can only be seen in the park. Some Pokemon could actually only be seen in the bug catching contest in the park, so that's interesting how they removed that. That warden. I'm curious to know what his deal is. There used to be a PC where this tree was, so that's kind of random. Alright, let's head right out here. And I think that's going to do it for this episode. Not a whole ton of story progress, except for that warden thing, which may or may not become relevant in the future, I don't know. But anyway, next time on Pokemon Liquid Crystal, we are going to be continuing on this route and definitely dealing with the Wiggly Tree. So I will see you guys next time.